This lesson is for section 4.7. We're going to be graphing more rational functions. So this is the second day of graphing rational functions. So we're going to go through this a little bit quicker. Um, the, all of these problems are going to go through the horizontal asymptote. Okay. Um, just to reiterate, the horizontal asymptote tells you the long run behavior of the function. Okay. When you when you get past the vertical asymptotes and the x-intercepts. So basically, the horizontal asymptotes can be crossed when it's in the middle of the graph, okay? And that's what you're gonna see here, is you're gonna see your horizontal asymptotes crossing through the graph. Now the first three problems, it's obvious that the horizontal asymptote is going through the graph because of the, the plotted points that you can actually see in your graph. Now when you get to problem four down here, this is where um, it's not as obvious that it crosses, so we will tell you that it crosses by saying explicitly in the directions, graph and show at which point the graph crosses the horizontal asymptote. So this tells you right away that it should be crossing, okay? So let's go back to the first three examples here. And these are ones where um, it might not explicitly tell you, even though I am telling you here that they are going through. In the um, homework or in your test or quiz, it might not exactly say it goes through the horizontal asymptote because you should be able to tell that by the points that you, you get. So I'm going to find all that information. I'm going to find the vertical asymptotes, the horizontal asymptotes, um, the x and y intercepts, and then from there I'm going to go ahead and graph. Now after I factor this uh, both polynomials here and I find all of my important information like my vertical and horizontal asymptotes in the x and y intercepts, I'm going to go ahead and start graphing this. So I'm going to create that vertical asymptote at negative 2 and at 1. And just go ahead and label, especially on your quiz or test, um, and you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now we know that the x-intercept here goes through that horizontal asymptote because I actually have an x-intercept. So that's why this is obvious that it's going to go through um, the horizontal asymptote. So I get, I get to plot a point at negative one-third zero and at zero negative one-half. So let's put them about right there. Um, now the behavior as it approaches that negative two, that vertical asymptote, it should look like this. And that's how it's going through um, your horizontal asymptote. These are very similar to what we saw yesterday. Now both of these are odd multiplicities, so that means it's going to jump to the opposite side of that horizontal asymptote, so this would be the other two branches of that curve. So um, again, this is an obvious one because as you solve for things, you're seeing that it crosses the horizontal asymptote because you have an x-intercept at negative one-third zero. When we look at problem two, we end up seeing a hole. Okay, so it's already factored for us. I see a hole. I want to make sure that I am explicit about this hole and I find the coordinate, so I plug 4 back into the re resulting function here. Make sure you don't do it back in your original. So f of 4 is equal to 3 over 1 times uh, 3, or sorry, 6, because I'm plugging in 4 here, and I get 1 half. So the hole is at 4, 1 half. Okay, I'm going to find the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes as well as the x and y intercepts. Okay, now that I've found this information here, which I'm hoping you're pausing and trying to find the same information as well, so and then checking obviously with what I have too to make sure that you can do this on your own, um, I end up with a vertical asymptote at 3 and negative 2. And I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And I have two distinct points, an x-intercept at 1, 0, which is again why it's obvious that it's crossing that horizontal asymptote. I'm telling, or you know, that the just by solving for the x-intercept, I'm seeing that it crosses the horizontal asymptote y equals 0. I also have a y-intercept at 0, 1, 6, so somewhere like right here. So as, as that graph approaches this um, horizontal, or sorry, vertical inter, uh, asymptote, it's going to look like so. It's going through that horizontal asymptote. Now on the other side again because these are odd multiplicities then your branch should be up here and your other branch should be down here. It's going to jump to the opposite side of that horizontal asymptote. The only thing we also have to include is the fact that you have a hole at 4 1 half. So instead of graphing this um, 
without a discontinuity here, I want to graph a hole, and I'm just going to show that by putting an open circle here at 4, 1 half. Okay, so that would be the sketch for this function here. Now I'm going to let you guys um, do number three and check the key. Uh, make sure you're you're finding all of your important information, and then from there, since it is supposed to cross the horizontal asymptote, make, make sure you get either an x or a y intercept that does cross. Okay, so go ahead and check the key with that one. In number four, this is one where it's not explicit by solving for the x or the y intercepts that it's crossing the horizontal asymptote. So this is one where on you know the, in the directions it would specifically say that it does cross the horizontal asymptote. So I'll I'll show you um, what to do in that case. So we're going to factor and find all of our important information just like normal. So I'm going to pause and go ahead and do that. Okay, so just by my information here, um, if I were to graph this, and I'm going to ignore the fact right now that it says that it crosses the horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to show you why it's, it, it's important that we have to explicitly say this. Because if you were to graph this, you would sketch your vertical asymptotes at two-thirds. So that's about one right there. 2 thirds and negative 4 with a horizontal asymptote at 1 third. Okay, now if I graph my um, x intercepts, one at negative 2, the other at 1 0, and my y intercept at 1 fourth. My y-intercept does not cross that horizontal asymptote. So you might think that this is supposed to look like that, okay, where it doesn't cross. It doesn't explicitly say that it's cross, or well, I actually do tell you that it's crossing, but you might not know that that is, is supposed to cross. So when you graph this, you might graph it like this, and, and then this is kind of um, going against what we, what we know about odd multiplicities. These should not go in the same direction because at this particular um, a vertical asymptote, this is um, an odd degree. Okay, so that's maybe one way that you could check to see, okay, that doesn't actually make sense, it, it should actually go through here. But since we explicitly tell you, so this is a wrong sketch, um, the points are fine, but the way I drew the branch in was obviously wrong. Um, since we explicitly tell you that it does cross the horizontal asymptote, what you can do is say, okay, I know that at some point this function should equal one-third. Okay, where it crosses the horizontal asymptote. So at some point, it's supposed to equal one third. So I set my function f of x equal to a third. So x squared plus x minus two over three x squared plus ten x minus eight should equal one third. So I'm not going to use the factored form here because I'm going to cross multiply and solve, and that would be easier than having to um, use this factored form here. So I have. If I cross multiply, 3x squared plus 10x minus 8 is equal to 3 times x squared plus x minus 2. Now after I distribute, I see that my 3x squareds here are going to cancel out, and I'm left with an, a linear equation, so I subtract that 3x over, and I end up with x equaling 2 sevenths. So at the point 2 sevenths, 1 third, this lies on that graph. So 2 sevenths 1 third is about, you know, it's not exactly accurate, but it's about right there, which is how you can see now that the graph is going to cross that horizontal asymptote like this. So now it's consistent with what we know about odd multiplicities. These two are going in opposite directions, okay, as they go to the vertical asymptote. So that last branch here must be over on this side, okay? So that's actually the end of the lesson. Um, I tried to keep it a little bit shorter than the other ones. Um, I do want you to just double check that you can do these problems. Um, so obviously number three you should be checking as well, but um, go back and you know review if, if you didn't get the correct answer. And then go ahead and try five and six. These are going to cross the horizontal asymptote. Some might be, one of the two might be actually explicit and you can tell just by looking at the points that you get um, after you solve for the x and y intercepts. But um, I believe at least one of these is going to be um, where you have to solve, like we did in this problem here, to find where that point actually crossed the horizontal asymptote. And then the last two problems here are just review um, from yesterday's problems. So these are both really good thinking questions, so make sure you do those as well and check with the key. All right, nice job. I will see you in class tomorrow.